What's going on guys? If you're new to the channel, my name is Kyle Welcher. I travel all over the country, fish as much as I possibly can. And if you watch the channel for a long time now, I appreciate you coming back for another video. Today, this is one for the guys that have been watching my channel for a while. They have been requesting to look in this box right here specifically. I showed a little bit of this technique whenever I was talking about top waters in the True Series. But now we're going to do a little bit deeper dive into what I actually do for throwing a frog. So I'm going to show you my exact frog setup. Like literally exactly what I do, what I keep in my boat. First off, I'm gonna show you exactly how many of these I keep in my truck. So here's a bag of shad colored frogs. You can see I keep them, you know, I keep some specks in there, I keep some whites in there, I keep some misty shad, you can see the whites on the back. I keep that many shad colored frogs in my truck just in case I get on the bite throwing that color. And I've got a little bit of the darker ones. I got some green punk ones in there. I've got some bluegill color ones in there. I don't know how many's in there, 12 or 15 frogs, a ton, a bunch of them anyway. So these are all my bluegill colored frogs. And then I've got some hodgepodge, mix match frogs right here, some whopper ploppers in there, another bag of top waters and frogs. But this truth series is all about showing you what I keep in my boat. And this is the box right here that I keep in my boat. So for, before we get into that, let's get into the rod that I actually built specifically for throwing a frog on. So this right here is a seven foot six, heavy, fast, point blank, you know, blank that I, I build myself. I keep the cork as small as possible. And this is the actual frog rod that I throw all the time. This one, I just won the BFL on this exact same rod. I throw it all the time. Throw it on the St. John's River and everything. I keep the cork very, very small because whenever I hold it, I only hold it just like this. Whenever I'm throwing a frog, I keep my hand just like this and I barely touch the cork and it keeps it extremely lightweight. The hook keeper that I went, decided to go with is the regular round old style hook keeper that's been around forever and ever and ever because whenever I have a frog laying on the front deck, a lot of times it'll bounce off if I use one of the flipping style or drop shot style hook keepers. So I went with the regular style hook keeper because it holds the frog a little bit better. Another thing that I did that I didn't do with my fluorocarbon rods is I went ahead and I used number five size guides. That's just a little bit bigger of a guide. And what that does is whenever the, the braid gets wet or picks up any debris or particles or something like that, the braid really flows in and out of these guides really, really well. They're a little bit bigger foot, so they're a little bit more heavy duty. So I went with the number five size guide for these. And then the reel I use is a Shimano Corrado 70XG. For whatever reason, this reel specifically throws this frog so well to me. Like for whatever reason, this reel seems so fast, even faster than the other Shimano Corrado 70s I have, and even faster than the Shimano Metanium MGLs. This reel right here absolutely launches this frog, and I don't even understand it, but for whatever reason, I can throw it, and not even really skip it under these bushes. I can just throw it on a freaking dart, and it'll just go right under the bush and hit the bank. Like, I don't understand it, but that's how it happens. I did upgrade the handle a little bit, because I do have really big hands and the Shimano Corrado 70 XG comes with very small knobs. So what I did was I took a knob off my Metanium MGL and I went ahead and put the smaller Shimano Corrado 70 handle on one of the Shimano Metaniums that I use for reaction baits. So I got a little bit bigger knobs on here so whenever I'm really ranching down on them fish, I don't bust my knuckles quite as bad. It gives me a little bit better control and I don't miss my knobs. Even though I really didn't miss my knobs with the Corrado 70, I just felt like I should upgrade to a little bit bigger handle. So that's what I did. The braid that I throw is 60 pound K9 8 strand. The 8 strand is thicker and more strong than the 9 strand, but the 9 strand throws a lot better. So it's a very, very smooth braid. Comes off really, really well. Comes out of the guides. I love it. It's the, it's the braid that I throw a frog on all the time. It is the K9 8 strand, 60 pound. And that is my setup right there, dude. 7 foot 6. A lot of people go with the 7 foot 3. I tried out a 7 foot 3 for a while. Actually, I lost a 5 pounder and a 4 pounder in the FOW BFL I fished just a couple weeks ago. On, on the first BFL, I was on a seven foot three heavy. The rod is plenty powerful, but I feel like with the length, I just can't generate the, the enough hook set whenever I make a super long cast. So a seven foot six, a super long cast, I set the hook and the fish is just coming straight to me instantly. So went back up to the seven foot six. It's the rod I've thrown forever. It's my favorite frog rod. And that is it right here. I built this rod just for a frog. Got a couple like it. And that's the one, hopefully, we're gonna bust some more big ones on this year. But everybody wants to know about baits. And even though I think that's the wrong way to think about bass fishing as a whole, everybody wants to talk about baits. So I'm going to show you what frogs I keep in my box right now. Now, for the most part, the box that are, the frogs that are in this box are used. And, you know, I, I might use them again or I might not. Usually, I don't use any out of this box in a tournament. I just use, these are just ones I pretty much use fun fishing or practicing or in a little bit smaller tournaments. So, I've kind of got it uh, sectioned up. This one is not supposed to be over here. i got it kind of disorganized right now. But for the most part... I keep two main colors, two main color schemes of frogs that I really want to focus on. 
So number one is I'm gonna be fishing for bluegill. I'm gonna use something like this natural green. I'm gonna use something like this sunfish. I'll use something like this green pumpkin. I'll, even the black and yellow, I feel like looks like bluegill sometimes in the pre-spawn. I have a killer gill right here. I have a few of these brand new in the box. That's another one that doesn't really look like a bluegill to me, but is supposed to look like a bluegill. So for the most part, I just keep it with, you know, this color, sunfish, and green pumpkin for bluegill. Whenever I'm really trying to imitate a bluegill, that's what I'm going to use. And then other times when I'm trying to imitate a shad, I've got one right here called nasty shad with a little bit of red accent when the water's a little bit dirtier. I'll throw the all white when the water's a little bit dirtier, even though this one's tails are kind of raggedy, but that's what I do. The all white when the water's a little bit dirtier. The black and yellow when the water's a little bit dirtier. When I get on a really good pre-spawn bite, I usually am throwing this black and yellow one right here in the pre-spawn. So that's the one that I throw a lot in the pre-spawn. And then, like I said, I just keep a couple of specks for crystal clear water whenever the water is really clear and they're feeding on shad that's that's the color that i really want to use is the speck color and you know I, it's got the bright red mouth on it it's almost a translucent color and if you've never seen this this is a good bluegill color right here you can see the bottom is really chartreuse and the top is green it just looks natural like you know kind of the colors that a bluegill has that's the main one i use for bluegills and then obviously everybody knows green pumpkin green pumpkin's got good colors for everything and this right here is a, a nice green pumpkin frog that I throw sometimes here and there whenever I am imitating bluegill and stuff like that. So, and then the frog that I throw almost all the time is the regular size Spro popping frog. It's the right weight. I don't lose a lot of fish on it. And even though you can't tell that from that one BFL video, but for the most part, I fished the Elite Series down there on Eufaula. Caught, you know, a few frogfish, probably caught 10 or 15 frogfish that week. Never lost a single one on a frog. I did miss a few, but that's, you know, that's going to happen. You're going to miss some on every single bait you throw. But as far as losing them after I got the hooks in them, I never lost a single fish because I'm throwing the right rod and the right line. You know, I take the hooks and I do bend them a little bit, and I'll show you how I do that in just a second. But for the most part, I want to go over what frogs I use for what situation first. So in the fall, whenever the shad's really, really small, I'll go down to something more subtle. Hope the wind's not killing y'all too bad, but I'll go down to something more subtle, like a little small Spro Frog Junior, and that's the one that I'll throw whenever there's shad around. You can see the belly's white, the top is a little bit green, so it imitates a few different things, but for the most part, it has a really shad-like profile, and that's the one that I use a lot in the fall when the, when the shad are very small. Another thing, I've got a couple of these color ones, and then I've got some that I've tried to use in the fall when I cut the legs all the way off. Just makes that profile even smaller whenever the shad, fish are really blowing up in some grass beds or something like that. That are small with the legs cut off or even, even more of a smaller profile. And I'll throw that whenever it's tough in the fall and stuff like that. And then, obviously, you got to keep a couple of the full size. Let me grab that sucker real quick. Oh, you got to keep a couple of the full size Spro regular frogs, just in case you come across some matted vegetation or something like that. Here in the south, we have a lot of, we have some hydrilla in some of the lakes around here. And another thing we do is we throw these on piling mats and stuff like that a lot. And this sucker just slides over the top of any of that stuff, you know, a lot better than most other frogs do, like in the popping style. And I do keep baby powder on all these. What it does is just prefer, uh, preserves the legs a little bit better because the legs are rubber. And if you keep moisture away from it, it doesn't get hot and doesn't melt together. So I do put a little bit of baby powder on here from now. From time to time now i've got a couple of these frogs over here on this side that are supposed to be bluegill imitators so i'm going to move them right over here to where the bluegill frog are supposed to be it's kind of messed up right now but this is exactly how it is in my boat so i got some of these kind these are the spro popping shad every single one of these i've ever bought in my entire life has filled up with water i've never had one literally never that did not sink after just a few casts so i don't throw them very often any of the shad variety to me they just they don't float for very long so i stick to the spro popping frogs to me that's the best of both worlds i saw some comments about upgrading the hooks on the frogs i have done that i've definitely done that what you don't want to do is overload the back of the frog whenever you put bigger hooks in a frog it goes from the frog sitting perfectly level to the frog sitting up a little bit more and what that causes is the frog to roll whenever it's walking more like this instead of sitting level and really walking like this and whenever you've got a really good frog that doesn't fill up with water at all it's going to sit level and it's going to walk left to right and you're going to get way more bites whenever it sits with his butt down it rolls more and i do not like the way it looks at all so i will instantly cut it off and start digging out me a brand new one so i'll show you now what i do with the hooks to you know get them exactly how i want them so this one right here okay so i've actually tweaked the hooks on this one already they are dead on exactly how i want them to be so you can see whenever you look down the side of this frog right here i don't know if you, how well you're gonna be able to see that but i have offset the hooks from the body just a tiny tiny amount and what that means is now the hooks 
actually stick out this way from the body just a little so whenever i rub my fingers down the side of that frog they instantly get caught right there so if this ever comes out you know is in a frog is in a bass's mouth and tries to come out it's going to grab skin on the way out no matter what and then if the frog does compress a little bit it's going to get them right here i do also bend them up just about two degrees up so you can see i got my legs messed up in it so you can see right here I do have my hooks bent just a tad up, I mean just a little bit up, but this frog is really hot right now, so it's a little bit bigger than normal. And that's what's gonna happen when you throw a frog for a long time, especially in the sun, is they get hot and they swell up just a little bit. So it's really important to offset the frog hooks out more than up. So I see people bend them up a lot, but the biggest thing is bending them up a little and then out. And that's gonna help it grab on the way in, out of the fish's mouth. So that's what I do. And you can see you cannot rub your, your fingers down the side of this frog without getting pricked as soon as it touches the gap of that hook. So that's what I do with all my frogs, every single brand that I use. That's what I do. So hope you enjoyed this video, guys. That's the ones I keep in my boat. I keep it pretty simple. I throw some blacks, I throw some bluegill color ones, and then I throw some whites and some shad color ones. So that's about it. I'm always throwing a spro popping frog. I rarely throw anything else. So that's just the truth. That's what I do. If y'all think I believe in colors, a lot of y'all that was watching my videos last summer, y'all saw me fishing uh, on a local river close to where I lived last year. And y'all could see me, every time I went fishing, I had on a different color frog. And I said that in my videos. Every time I went fishing, a completely different color frog. And I caught them every single day I went exactly the same. It never mattered. I threw a different color every time and still caught them. I don't believe in colors at all. I think my whole process for throwing a frog is I try to throw it where other people do not throw it. And I try to have it the, give it the best action that it, nobody else gives it. And what another thing I try to do is get it under the bushes or under a dock or up every side of the seawall or whatever I'm throwing and get it up there with almost no splash at all. Get it in there as quietly as possible so the first time the fish notices that bait, it's got the good action and the fish is automatically going to commit to it. So anyways, that's my theory on frog fishing. Hope you enjoyed the video. I will see y'all in the next one. Okay, so if y'all do not know Miss Hunter Brooke, who's behind the camera right now, she's my beautiful, lovely wife. She has her tackle box right here rigged up with all the best goodies in it right here, as you can see. And she wants me to show y'all what kind of frogs she has in her box. So, number one frog that I have never bought, never used in my entire life. This one is actually called Poison. Really, really cool color. Like, very, very cool color. I really like the way it looks. But I've never caught a fish on anything that looks like that. Because mainly, for the most part, I don't throw them that looks like that. But that's one, that's one of Miss Hunter Brooks' staples. She's also got a sunfish color one. I do enjoy that one. That is a very good color. And then she's got some a junior neon green that's an old one dude that frog right there is old look how long them legs are they don't come like that anymore might get some money for that on ebay because it's an old one usually the legs come about this long now so that one's got the long legs like it used to and then you got a couple of the small little cute baby popping frogs so you know how to fish frogs for miss hunter that's the only five you need so here's a little bit of bonus footage guys i'm gonna show y'all exactly what i do to turn this frog into one that i'm going to use in a tournament or just fun fishing or anytime so i'm gonna show y'all right here the hooks that i'm that how they come stock i can literally rub my fingers right here and that is that is no fluff nothing i'm rubbing my fingers right down the side of the frog i'm not getting hooked i can rub them down the top never get hooked and down the side so first thing i always do a little bit of rusted pliers there but that's how it goes whenever you're in a boat fishing all the time first thing i do is i just reach in there grab the hook right there behind the barb that's what you want to make sure is you never touch the barb of the hook because you break your barb off you pretty much just ruin the frog you gotta change the hooks on it and it's never gonna act right again if you change the hooks so i take it i just twist it straight up just a hair so you can see right there now we've got a little bit of a raise to it not a ton but just a little bit where it's kind of facing up towards the top of the frog that's all i'm going to do to it right there same thing on the other side just gonna go in there grab the hooks I'm only trying to bend it up just a degree or two because you bend it up too far you start to lose your strength in the hook so you don't want to bend metal too much because then the metal is never as strong ever again so then i take it and i grab it by the side so i don't know if you can see that but i've got the hook clamped in dead to the side right in the middle of my thing got the hook in there and i'll just take it and i'll just twist them out just a hair so now right there when i rub my finger down that side it automatically grabs right there no more rubbing like i was doing a while ago it automatically grabs I do the same thing on the other side, just offset them just a tad. And that's it, right there. That frog right there is a full tournament frog now. I don't want to bend it too far up because whenever you bend your frog hooks too far up, whenever you set the hook, it's easier for the hooks to bend out and flex. And then you've got a bad angle on the fish. And when you try to swing in like a five or six pounder in the boat, it can bend out. I've had it happen and I'm never going to do that again. So this right here is how I bend the frog out. Just a few degrees up, a couple degrees out. And then you've got it where you can't rub down the side no more without getting hooked. So that's a ready to go frog right now.